time. Uh, I'm out here filming by myself. My daughter uh, isn't out with me or anybody else, so I'm, I'm self-filming off a tripod. Uh, and again, near the dam area, so that background noise may be there again. Uh, other than that, though, I'm back at the same spot we were fishing bluegills out of the tiny little river we were at the last time. Just want to see if we could uh, have some more action down here. You can actually see some bluegills down in there. Let's just see if you're ready to feed yet. Yeah. There's a smaller one. That's not a terrible little bluegill, but definitely going back in the water. the last thing they got consistently bigger as it got closer to dark. Another small bluegill. Oop. Nice small one. Like I said, they did last time get uh, consistently bigger as it got closer to dark. And once it actually was dark, we couldn't see the bobber anymore. We caught a lot of big hand-sized gills. That is far up in the rapids. It's a little bit bigger one. Uh, if I were looking for some fryer there to put the pan, this one might make a bucket there, depending. But uh, not today. We're not keeping anything today. We're just down here for fun. Another one there. You know, we're using the just a bobber split shot, which is probably not really needed at this depth. And an ice fishing jig to put a wax worm. Release him back in there. I see a lot of bluegills in there, but I don't see a lot of big ones this way. Most people I don't think would look at this piece of water because they should. It's just way too small. I do think we're here just a little bit early. I do think we're here uh, a little bit earlier. We're quite a bit earlier than we were the last time. Like I said, right around dark is when it really started picking up down here, and you can see the big gills coming in from down river. It's not much down there. It's really shallow and mucky, but we certainly come from somewhere to get here. Like I said, I think most people would overlook this tiny little piece of water. Um, I mean, even with these smaller gills, it's a lot of fun. Uh, bring the kids on or something. But uh, when we get them bigger gills out of here later at night, it really is a great fishing spot. 
All right, I'm gonna hang out for a little bit, uh, turn off the camera, and uh, wait for the action to pick up a little bit. I'll screw around until then. All right, it's getting a little darker here. Getting about an hour away from sunset or so, and I just pulled this bruiser out of that little tiny bit of water there. So who would think? And I'm a big guy here. I'm 6'3", 270 pounds here, so my hand's pretty big. But look at the size of that gill. How thick it is across the back. That's a good fish. That's a good fish out of anywhere for a bluegill. It came out of this trickle. Like I said, you can't always, you know, sometimes you want to overlook a little puddle like this. But in this case, you can't. And I know it's getting windy here. Throw him back in. I know it's getting a little windy here, so the stay a little closer to the camera here for the microphone, but like I said, I'm going to go back to fish and see if I can catch a few more. If I do, I'll, I'll uh, turn on the camera again. I'm well, still catching a few bluegills here, or halfway decent one here, but uh, it's really started slowing down, and I'll show you in a second here. I'll tip the camera up. The front coming through, and as soon as this front hit us, boy, they, they just disappeared. They all swam down the river and have disappeared. It must be not like these weather conditions that are coming here. And it has started to rain a little bit. Uh, I'm not worried, too worried. The camera's waterproof, but I'm not. So I may have to boogie out of here soon. But I'll take a picture right at the front here. And it's really having a negative impact on fishing today. I don't just take a look up here. I don't know how well you can see that on this camera. You can see there's a front coming up here, and it's a couple miles away yet. But boy, about uh, maybe five minutes ago, I just watched all the fish pile on out of here, and and now I'm hardly getting a bite. So I think it has to do with that front. We'll see. I'll try to keep fishing here for a little bit, see if they come back at all, and if not, we'll we'll call it an evening. Oddly enough, the front is kind of stalled out. It's still sitting pretty much in the same spot, but the bluegills are still biting. Here's another big one. I think it's way slowed down, but they're still biting a little bit. So we'll just keep trying for a while here and see what we get. Well, we're all less than an hour from dark here, um, and that front is stalled out and kind of breaking up a little bit, and the fish are coming back a little bit. Now, it's going to be hard because it's kind of dark, but. Looking down here and see if you can see it all, and I know it's crooked and everything else here. Um, but down there, the fish are starting to rise on their own. You can see them every so often here in the creek come to the surface. Um, from about there all the way up to the front, they're, they're actually surfacing now. So I think they're returning from down the river. Um, hopefully it'll be some of those bigger ones we caught the other day. Well, I've got about probably a half a dozen decent ones now. That I did throw them back, um, but I did catch about a half a dozen decent ones. I haven't, you know, last time we were here we had about uh, two dozen or more, so. All right, I'm gonna get back here, doing a little fishing, leave the camera on for a little bit, and see what we get. Again, smaller gill, very round, very th whoop, very thick across the back. Definitely just a younger fish. They're not stunted or anything. They're uh, they're nice fish. You know, back in the day, I've cleaned many of this size uh, for eating. Hopefully, these can start to the bigger ones. Will start showing up more often. Although they may run out of light. Last time it was pretty dark when these guys come out. Scrapper. Nice smaller gill. 
nice have to have the green fed gills either. Something like that is cleanable and eatable, edible. You know, you could eat those. You catch, you know, limits 25, you catch 25 of those and flay them up, and that'll feed one or two people. Um, as long as they're big and thick and fat like that, and the population's good. You know, sometimes taking some fish actually helps the population out. You know, less fish get a little bit bigger. Uh, keeps some places from stunting. Because, uh, well, if you looked at our fish identification video the other day, I caught uh, maybe 30 bluegills there. Um, yeah, none of them were even close to that big, and that's because the whole lake is stunted out. There's just so many of them, they, they don't get big. In fact, uh, we caught one small uh, uh, green sunfish, that was maybe two and a half inches long, and it was uh, full of eggs, oddly enough. Uh, I've seen that before, where really small fish will start you know, trying to reproduce because they just aren't getting any bigger. So, you know, <coughs> you want to have a good lunch of fish there or something, Take a 25 home like that, 20, 25 of those home. That might just be the ticket. A lot of people size me. Uh, it's getting a little bit later here, and I have caught a couple of nicer ones again uh, in a row, so I'm hoping that uh, we're going to start seeing the bigger ones now. So let's see what we get. wiggle it now. In this case, we broke the jig off. <laughs> Which is better than killing the fish. The fish this size deserves to go back in. And you can actually, you know, I'm actually going uh, to be able to get this jig out because it's right here by the mouth here, just before it broke. Um, it pulled out. But it, on a fish like this, if you, know, if you have other jigs, consider, consider letting them go because, uh, you know, in a few days the acid in the fish's body will dissolve that hook and uh, he'll be just fine. So, you lose a hook in one and it's going to kill him to get it out. Uh, consider letting him go. This one actually fell in deeper than it was here, so I'll have to shake him out. And here it is. <laughs> shake the fish here. It'll be a little bit dizzy, but he, he shouldn't be anywhere so rare. And voila. <laughs> and he can go back in the water. But like I was saying, if you get a hook, especially just a regular hook, you don't know, buy some hook, you may want to consider letting him go with the hook and let him dissolve it out, let him live. I'm going to retie here. All right, I'm retied up here. It's starting to get dark off. This stuff might not look so good. I'm not sure. It still seems to look okay. Here, so you may notice it being a little odd and grainy. I mean, it's quite enough. Although I can't press it. Here, I'll bring them closer. It's a small rock bass. Caught a few of these in here last time, too. Didn't catch any bigger ones, and that's about the biggest one he caught out of these, but I sure put up a tussle. No. And it looks like it's time for a new axe. This ice fishing jig here has caught a couple hundred bluegills now. Hook's getting kind of bent up. Uh, still ready for duty. Alright, got our wax run back on here. Rock bass. Whatever 
you play something come out of that right? well, That's when we seem to catch them here. She can start, start catching the rock bass. Uh, oh, get in there. Potato chip bluegill here. quite the size we want, but Tiny rock bass. As you can see, it just got too dark for our footage after this point. While we did catch a couple more decent bluegills out of the small creek, it just did not turn out. We do thank you for watching. We'll bring you more videos as soon as we can. And don't forget to visit us at our website at www.nelsoncreekoutdoors.com. Thanks.